Vitality is our ability to have spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical bliss. Some call it paradise. We call it a game. Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimson Knights, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your host, femininity coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So I had to come to you guys and give you my perspective on a recently written article that's been sort of circling around and the title of the article is also the title of the show why more black women should consider marrying white men okay and i'm gonna go ahead and read the article to you and share the screen and we're going to talk about this because i think i've got a little bit different perspective than everybody else on this subject so let me go ahead i'm gonna share the screen and i'm going to read the article to you guys so we can all be on one accord about this article okay why more black women should consider marrying white men and this is written by ralph richard banks and we're going to get into who that is in just a moment okay so two of the most powerful positions in the united states government will soon be held for the first time by black women kamala here she's black when it's convenient uh, Kamala Harris and Katanji Brown Jackson. Okay. Harris, as we all know, is the vice president of the United States and Brown Jackson. Jackson could soon become a Supreme Court justice. Well, this was written before her confirmation. So um, she's confirmed as a Supreme Court justice as of the recording of this show. Uh, but Harris and Brown Jackson also share a personal attribute that is equally noteworthy. Each has a white husband. This fact is significant. The effects of racism have left well-educated Black women with a paucity of Black male partners. According to Brookings Institute data, Black men are less likely than Black women to have completed high school and 50% less likely to have uh, attained a four-year college degree. Um, now, these stats are real not stats. Um, that, that rate about high school, and that's not true. But anyway, I'm not even really going to focus on the stats. Let's, let's finish. Yet, despite the shortage of suitable Black partners, Black women have also been the least likely of any minority group to marry outside of their race, according to data from the Pew Research Center. Now, this part is true, but it's, it's a half truth because he doesn't say why. Um, black women are least desired and they are least to get married. This would, uh, this, would, uh, uh, this would indicate or insinuate that black women overall have race loyalty and they actually don't. Okay, but anyway, rather than partner with men of other races, many heterosexual black women either don't marry or marry black men with whom they are not especially well matched. And these mismatched relationships contribute to African Americans having the highest divorce rate of any racial group. In fact, black women are the only demographic to have a higher divorce rate than marriage rate. And they initiate them. But anyway, a bit more than a decade ago, I published a book, Is Marriage for White People? And we're actually going to get into the synopsis for that book uh, that examined the decline in marriage across American society and especially among African Americans and focus in particular on the predicament of black women. The book raises the possibility that black women like Harris and Brown Jackson would do well to open themselves to partnering with men who are not black. After all, black men appear to have no problem marrying out. That same Pew report revealed they are twice as likely as black women to have a non-black spouse, which may be true. But again, that insinuates that there is far that 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 black men are uh, marrying out at this high percentage and they actually aren't. It's not difficult to date out or marry out twice as likely than black women because nobody really wants black women. Um, but it still remains a good 80% of black men who are married are married to black women. So this is also misleading. But anyway, my book generated considerable controversy and exposed fissures within black America. While younger people appear more open to interracial relationships, 
a black woman old enough to be my mother made a point of telling me that I was a disgrace to my race. But the most significant fissure was between black men and women. While some black women were made uncomfortable by the book and the way it put them in the spotlight, many others embraced this message of empowerment. That was a message that not all black men wanted to hear. At one of my book talks in Washington, D.C., I worried a fight would break out between a young black woman who asserted her right to choose whatever type of man she wanted and an older black man who condemned such sentiments as betraying the race. Now, I find this to be difficult to believe because we don't find it very often that black men are in danger of fighting black women. That's not that's not a common thing. But anyway, other critics, including some black women, contend that white racism precluded black women from finding non-black partners. And this convinced many black women that they cannot or should not partner with a non-black man, even if the alternative was remaining unpartnered or in a bad relationship because all relationships with black men are bad. As a result, many black women feel that they should marry down before they marry out because again, all relationships with black men are bad. I explained in the book why black women should not be pressured to sacrifice their own chances for happiness out of some misplaced loyalty to black men as if they have that. Nor should black women feel beholden to black men under the guise of advancing the race. If the price of racial solidarity is a bad intimate relationship, then the cost is too high. Black women should not be held hostage to the struggles of black men, right? Because they're having a completely different experience. True, race can provide a basis of compatibility, but race itself cannot solely sustain a relationship. And there are many bases of compatibility other than race. Black women's increased rate of interracial marriage from a mere 3% in 1980 to 12% in 2017, according to pre-research, also reflects the increasing autonomy to choose partners that best serve them as if somebody was you know, holding them hostage. They should not have to apologize or feel guilty for doing so. Nobody cares. Um, there has been little discussion in the media or culture about the white partners of prominent black women like Harris or Brown Jackson. And I hope this reflects the increasing social acceptance of such unions. If so, then black women will be able to enjoy the relationship freedom they deserve. OK. Now, who is Ralph Richard Banks? You can see he, he's the Jackson Eli Reynolds Professor of Law at Stanford Law School, right? And co-founder and faculty director of the Stanford Center for Racial Justice. That is who he is professionally. I actually looked him up and uh, he's married to a lady named Jennifer Eberhardt because I was very curious as to whether or not he had a spouse and who his spouse was. And you would think that a woman by the name of Jennifer Eberhardt would be a Becky and she's not, she's a black woman. She's not a, she's not an exotic black woman. She's not a mixed black woman. She's not a biracial black, she's a black woman. Okay. Look her up. Just look it up. Um, if you take a look at the synopsis for his book on Amazon, as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and share that little piece with you. Uh, just so you can kind of read along. I'm not probably not going to read the entire thing, but you'll be able to see it. Okay. This is the synopsis for the book on Amazon. It said black women are three times as likely as white women to never marry. That sobering statistic reflects a broader reality. African Americans are the most unmarried people in our nation. And contrary to public perception, the racial gap in marriage is not confined to women or the poor. Black men, particularly the most successful and affluent, are less likely to marry than their white counterparts. College-educated Black women are twice as likely as their white peers to never marry. So here you have an admission that there are upper-crust Black men, right? All right. So Is, Mar is Marriage for White People is the first book to illuminate the many facets of the African-American marriage decline and its implications for American society. The book explains the social and economic forces that have undermined marriage for African-Americans and that shape everyone's lives. It distills the best available research to trace the black marriage declines, far reaching consequences, including the disproportionate likelihood of abortions, STDs, single parenthood, same sex relationships, polygamous relationships and celibacy among black women. Now, how is the lack of marriage only one way affecting black women? Right. Because if black people in general are uh, not getting married to a high degree, this would affect the men. No. OK. This 
book centers on the experiences, not of men or the poor, but of those black women who have surged ahead, even as black men have fallen behind. Right. There is a story that ha theirs is a story that has not been told. Right. Because for whatever reason, I don't think he's heard of divestment Twitter and divestment YouTube, but whatever. Uh, empirical evidence documents its social significance, but its meaning emerges through stories drawn from the lives of women across the nation. OK. Uh, is marriage for white people frames the stark predicament that millions of black women now face, marry down or marry out. At the core of the inquiry is a paradox substantiated by evidence and experience alike. Excuse me. If more black women marry white men, then more black men and women would marry each other. That that doesn't make sense. But. I found his book to be or that article, rather, because I haven't read his book, but I found that article to be rather interesting. OK, it's a divestor's dream. That article, he basically confirms everything that a divestor says is the reason why she hates black men and loves white men. OK, the reason why she just can't stand. Uh, uh, a N word with a hard ER on it, a naker, or, or all these, a bully bag, all these other uh, words that are used to describe every single black man on the planet. And yes, I'm saying all. Divestors feel like it's all. So, so it's all. Um, even the ones they raise and birth that they say they shouldn't be birthing anymore. Uh, and I know that, that that they think all because they think that a genocide is the answer. Um, but in any case, I found that the article was super interesting because it's almost like he wants y'all to go marry white men. Like he's saying, listen. First of all, the information in it is misleading. It's full of a bunch of half truths without context and the not graduating, the this or that. And he never says why. He never says what the factors are or anything like that in the article at all about, you know, how how and why black women have been given more opportunities for mobility than black men. And that's been quite done on purpose. So he never touches that. So it's it's disingenuous on its face. Right. The whole entire argument is disingenuous on his face, but we're not even going to go there. It almost seems as like uh, he's inviting the divestors to leave. He's saying go. That's that's almost what I got out of it. You could call me crazy, but that's almost what I got out of that. The entire article seemed really tongue in cheek to me because and the reason why I'm saying that is not only he wrote the, the book that he wrote, but this is a black, a professional black man that was able to find a professional black woman to have children within the family. So why doesn't this black man who doesn't fit any of the description that he talks about in his article or his book? Why is he encouraging the least desired women in the United States to marry men that don't actually like them? but that they claim love them so much, right? They love them so much that their, their marriage rate really should spike, right? Because black women don't have, as a collective, they don't have any race loyalty. They never have. But anyway, like I said, the whole article seems really, really tongue in cheek. It's, a, it's an invitation for the divestors to leave. It's like, yes, all the accusations about black men's inadequacy as men uh, are all true every last single no matter how far-fetched no matter how widespread no matter how broad of a brush that you that that you that you stroke black men with all of it true okay black men are wounded by uh, a divestor's accusation of of him being inadequate wholly inadequate as a man and in, in, in any in any and every facet of his manhood uh Black men are not worthy of these queens, these beautiful black queens that should not be giving up her happiness, struggling and mewling uh, for the struggles of black men. Uh, 
that black men are just as vile and just as stupid and just as just as horrible as the divestors say that they are, right? All the stats bear it out. He talked about Pew Research results, you know, poll, poll results and yada yada yada. All this, all this half introduced data, half stated, you know, data or whatever. Um, and he's saying black women be better off without the likes of us. Okay. We could never take you to the status that uh, uh, took a model hair status. Okay. As black men, we're too inadequate. We're too stupid. We're never going to be able to take you to Katanji Brown Jackson status. Okay. Uh, because we're just too dumb. Okay. We're just too much uh, POSs. All right. We, 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 black men are just they're, they're too stupid. They're too stupid. All of them. All of them, every last one of them, it might be two out of 10,000 that, that that halfway have his stuff together. Maybe he's got a car and a job. Maybe he's not living in his mom's basement. Maybe, just maybe. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's not 52, you know, and never made anything out of himself. Perhaps, you know, we only going to get in your way. Black men only going to stand in your way. Stand in the way of your happiness. Stand in the way... We know you've been mewling for us, you know? We know you've been carrying our load for us because we're just a bunch of weak, stupid, idiotic, non-masculine men who are just defeated. And you move on, you know, go on with your life. You know what I mean? Don't, don't, don't wait on us. Don't, don't, don't wait on us. You know, we're nothing. You know, we're we're a group of nothing, you know, new back men. And you're these. High status queens, you know, and we've been holding you back. Basically, we've been holding you back. So, so since we've been holding you back, just, just don't, don't unfetter yourself from us disgusting group of men until we get our disgusting selves together. And maybe one day when we get our disgusting selves together, we'll be, you know, qualified and worthy to touch the hem of your garment. We'll be qualified to touch the hem of your garment. Okay, because you guys, you women, yeah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. There, there's, there aren't any flaws. There aren't any other factors keeping black women unmarried except for the dotards that are black men, right? Right? Because that's what that article said to me. And I choose to believe that it's kind of tongue in cheek because you really writing that? Because if it's not tongue in cheek, if he means that, then that's a sad piece of work. The article's a sad piece of work. If he meant that, like truly from his heart, with his disingenuous stats that he put in, in there, I feel sorry for him and anybody that takes that to heart. So sound off in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey, guys. Please like share and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.